Hello everyone, it's me Sanjay Vasu back here for another video. This time I'm doing it on Cambridge Primary Checkpoint for Mathematics Paper 1 April 2017. No calculators are allowed, let's start. Question 1. Write the missing number in the box. 4056 equals 4000 plus dash plus 6. We bring both of these to the other side. That means minus 4000 and minus 6 which are minusing the thousands place and the ones place which means you're left with 50 so 50 is the answer question 2 an airplane travels 54 kilometers in 6 minutes at a constant speed how far does it travel in 1 minute that's simply 54 divided by 6 which is equal to 9 kilometers question 3 Rajiv draws a Venn diagram to show the set of numbers from 20 to 30 a the number 21 is missing right in the correct place on the diagram so there is multiples of three even numbers and none of them. 21 is not an even number, but it's multiple of three, which is three into seven. So 21 goes there. B, one number has been written in the wrong place. Which number is it? So if we check the numbers, we'll see that 24 is a bit oddly placed. It is an even number, but it's not in the even numbers group, right? So that means this is definitely wrongly placed. It is a multiple of three, yes, but it's also an even number because well, 8 into 3 is 24, and 24 ends with a 4, which is even. So that means it should actually be placed over here, inside the intersection between the two sets. That's the answer. Question 4. A. Here's a shape drawn on the dotted grid. Name the shape. Well, you might think that, well, this does not look like a normal shape, right? But, well, you can just count the number of sides. Even though, yes, this will become irregular, it is still counted to be a polygon. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 sides, which means it is an irregular heptagon. B. Use this grid to draw a trapezium with one line of symmetry. That means you have to draw an isosceles trapezium. So we can draw it like this. And the line of symmetry is over here. That's the answer. Question 5. Lily, Safia, and Manjit have 24 marbles altogether. Manjit has the same number of marbles as Lily and Safia together. Lily has 5 marbles. How many marbles does Safia have? So if Manjit has the same number of marbles as the other two together, that means this one and this one will be two separate halves. So Manjit is equal to 12 marbles, right? Because that is 24 divided by 2. Lily plus Safia will also be equal to 12 marbles. And that means, since Lily is 5, 5 plus S is equal to 12. And that means S is equal to 12 minus 5, which is 7 marbles. That's the answer. Question 6. Mike has two pizzas. Each pizza is cut into eight equal slices. Mike eats two slices from each pizza. How much pizza does he have left? Write your answer as a mixed number. So two slices from each pizza means one, two are gone here, and one, two are gone here. So there is three-fourth of a pizza left here and three-fourth over here. So that would be three by four plus three by four, which is equal to six by four and this can be written as one and a half pizzas. So the answer is one and a half pizzas. Question seven. Ruby records the favorite color of the children in his class. A. Complete the frequency column to show this data. You might find the tally column useful. So let's count using tally. So favorite color. There's one blue, then there's one red, then there's one green, then there's one yellow, then there's two more red, and then there is one green, and then there's one yellow, there's one blue, there's another red, there's another green here, another red, so that's five red, there's another green and another yellow. And now blue is two, green is four, red is five, yellow is three. You can do that by counting the number of lines. B, which color is the mode? The mode will be the one with highest frequency, which is five red in this case. So the answer is red. Let's go to question eight. Here's a bar chart showing the money collected each month at a swimming pool. A. How much money was collected altogether in November and December? So each two divisions is 20. So each division is 10. So there's some missing ones, some missing numbers here, which are 
odd numbers multiplied by 10. So December will be 10. November is 30. So how much money is collected both November and December? 30 plus 10, which is $40. B, in which months were more than $70 collected? So let's draw the line of $70. It is here. So more than $70 is one, two, three, four months, which are July, August, September, and October. So July, August, September, and October. That's the answer. Question nine. Well, it's 1000 ml more than 3250 ml. That'll be 3250 plus 1000, which is equal to 4250 milliliters. That's the answer. Let's go to question 10. Draw a line to match each box to the correct number. The first has been done for you. So one half of 40, that'll be half into 40, which is 20, that's already given. One third of 75, that'll be one by three into 75, which is 25, and we can draw a line there. Next, one fifth of 200, that'll be one by five into 200. 200 divided by five is 40, so we can draw a line to 40 up there. That's the answer. Question 11. Here's a sequence of square numbers. Complete the sequence. So 1, that's 1 squared. 4, 2 squared. 9, 3 squared. Now the next one is 4 squared, which is 16. Now 25 is 5 squared. Next one will be 6 squared and 7 squared, which are 36 and 49 respectively. That's the answer. Question 12. Here's a puzzle. Write a different multiple of 6 in each box. The corner numbers must add up to 60. So writing a different multiple of 6. I'll just show you one example of writing. We can write 12, 18, and 30. So if we add these up, we get 60, and they're all multiples of 6. 12 is 2 into 6, 18 is 3 into 6, 30 is 5 into 6. Another trick of doing this, actually, is simply seeing that the sum is 60, which is 6 into 10. And all these are multiple of 6. So that means you can write this as 6 into A, we can write this as 6 into B, 6 into C, where A, B, and C are different numbers. And A plus B plus C is equal to 10, right? So we can write A numbers, which are all different, and they add up to 10. And then 6 into A, we write here. 6 into B, we write here. 6 into C, we write here. This is not the only answer for the question, but then this is just my answer. There's a few other answers as well. I'll give you just one example, which are 6, 24, and 30. That's the answer. Question 13. Jamila is thinking of a decimal number. What number could Jamila be thinking of? If the hundredth digit is twice the size of the tenth digit, and the unit digit is three less than the tenth digit. So we know that there are three digits, which are the unit, tenth, and hundredth. So unit digit is three less than the tenth digit. And the hundred digit is twice the tenth digit. So let's say the unit digit is one. This is not the only possibility. I'll tell you the other possibility later. But first, I'll just use one. And now we put one point. The unit digit is three less than tenth digit. So the tenth digit is three more than the units. So that'll be one plus three, which is four. And then the hundredth is twice the tenth digit which means 4 into 2, which is 8. So 1.48 is one of the two possible answers. There's actually another answer, which actually uses the unit digit as 0. So 1.48 is one answer, and then the unit digit 0 can make it as 0. Point. If we add 3 to this, we get the tenth digit, which means 3. And if we multiply by 2, we get 6, which is the hundredth digit. So it's either 1.48 or 0 0.36. If you put a 2, that means it'll be 2.5 because plus 3. And then multiply by 2, we get 10. But two digits cannot take the place of just one. So this is not possible. These two are the only answers. So any one of these is correct. That's the answer. Question 14. A bag contains the following cards. A, D, F, L, R, W. One card is taken out at random. Draw a line to match each statement with the correct probability word. First one's been done for you. So the card has letter T on it is impossible because there are no T's over here. The card has letter R on it. There's only one R out of total six. So one by six, which is less than half. So it is unlikely. 
the card has a capital letter on it. All these are capital letters, as we can see, right? So that means it is certain because any card you pick will be capital letter. That's the answer. Let's go to question 15. Question 15. What's the remainder when 95 is divided by 7? So let's do 95 by 7. We have 1 here, and then we have minus 7, we get 2, 25, and then we have 3 here, minus 21, we get 4. So the remainder is 4 over here. So, I'll just write that that's the remainder, and that's the answer. Question 16, draw the reflection of the shape in the mirror line. So we just reflect all the points in the mirror line, like I'm doing right now, just like this. And now simply connect the dots. That's how you do it. And that's the answer. So just one thing, like how do we plot the points of this mirror shape? It is because when we take, for example, this point, the shortest distance from this point to the line is horizontally. So this one unit, we just do that one unit from the mirror line on the opposite direction to get to the mirror point or the point which you mirror to the mirror line to get on new mirrored shape. So we can do this for all the other points. This is three units here, so three units opposite direction. Same here, three units, three units. And for this one, it's six units and six units like that. And that's how we get the four points, which are originally on that shape, but then it's mirror to this shape or reflected and that's how you do it that's the answer question 17 here's a number sentence sure i can use this information to solve a 112 into 70 with 112 into 7 is 784 so 70 is simply 7 into 10 so 112 into 7 is 784 so that will be equal to 112 into 7 into 10 as i just said that will be 784 into 10 just substituting and that will be 7840 B, 11.2 into 7, that will be equal to 112 divided by 10 into 7. That will be 112 into 7 divided by 10, because the multiplication and division doesn't matter what order you do them in. That will be equal to 784 divided by 10, which is 78.4. That's the answer. Question 19, draw a line to match each fraction with an equivalent decimal. The first one's been done for you. Half 0 0.5. One fourth is equal to 0 0.25 up here. Two fifth is equal to 0 0.4. And three tenths is 0 0.3. That's the answer. Oh, yeah. And just to explain, like, how I match these, I can say one by four. If you multiply both sides by 25, we get 25 by 100. And this we can easily convert to a decimal as 0 0.25. Now for 2 by 5, we multiply both sides by 2 to get 4 by 10, which is easily converted to 0 0.4. Now for 3 by 10, it's already in the form of a number for a numerator divided by the denominator, which is a power of 10, or 10 to the power of 1. So 3 by 10 can easily be written as 0 0.3. That's the answer. Question 19. Complete the calculations. A. 3.7 plus dash is 10. This is simply 6.3. Dash plus 0 0.24 equals 1. That is 0 0.76. Question 20. The points H, I, and J are plotted on a coordinate grid. A. Find the coordinates of point K so that H, I, J, K is a square. So the distance over here is 6x and minus 1y. And then minus 6y minus 1x. So the distance here will be minus 6x and then 1y up. So the point minus 4 comma minus 3 is point K. If you draw lines and just check, all of them will be minus 6 and minus 1. One of them will be the x value, other is y. It doesn't matter. But then, so if you actually draw the lines and measure the length, it'll all be equal. That's how you know it's a square. Also, the angles will be 90 degrees between every single line. B, plot point K on the grid. Yes, it's over here. And by the way, yeah, for part A, minus 4, comma, minus 3. Just forgot to write that down, but it's okay. Remember to write down your answer in the blank over there. And part B, I have already done. It's over here, plotting point K on the grid. Let's go to question 21. 
here are five numbers 3.2, 3.14, 3.42, 3.4, 3.12. Place them in order of size, starting with the smallest. So actually, smallest is 3.12, then comes 3.14, then comes 3.2, 3.4, and then 3.42 is the largest. That's the answer. Question 22. Complete the calculation. 35 into 8 is dash into 2. So 35 into 8 is simply 35 into 4 into 2. So that will be dash into 2, 35 into 4 into 2, right? So this will be given, so you can cancel that out. The remaining is 35 into 4, which is equal to 140. That's the answer. Question 23. Here are some statements. Write two of the statements correct and false if it's not correct. The first has been done for you. When two even numbers are added, the answer is even. That's true. You can use examples. 2 plus 4. Both are even. The answer is 6 even. When two odd numbers are added, the answer is even. That's also true because, let's say, 3 plus 5. That is 8. And that's even. You can use a few other examples, but it will also be even. When two even numbers are multiplied, the answer is even. This is also true because when you multiply, for example, 2 into 4, it's 8. Or let's say 4 into 8, 32. These are all even, so that's correct. When two odd numbers are multiplied, the answer is even. Well, finally, we get a false because when we take, for example, 5 into 7, we get 35. It is odd. So that's enough. This one example is enough to prove it's false. But also you can try other numbers, right? Like, for example, 3 into 7, 21. Yep, that's also odd. That's the answer. Question 24. List all the factors of 33. So that would be 1 and 33, obviously. I'm writing like this because I want to write in ascending order. And now 33 can also be 3 into 11. So these are also two factors. That's the answer. Question 25. Mia has three counters with numbers on them. 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.6. She places them on the grid so each line of the three counters has the same total. Use Mia's counters to complete the grid. So each line has the same total, right? Which means that it has a 0 0.5 plus 0 0.4 plus 0 0.3. 1.2 is the total. And so adding 0 0.4 with something and something, we get 1.2. These two numbers, 0 0.2 and 0 0.6, are the only numbers which fit. But then where to place the 2? That will be answered in this line. 0 0.5 plus dash and dash is equal to 1.2. That will be 0 0.6 and 0 0.1. 0 0.6 appears in both the lines, so that means it has to be in the intersection. And now 0 0.2 is here, 0 0.1 is here. That's the answer. Let's go to question 26. Complete the calculations. Dash into 10 is 26.9. Just bring 10 to the other side. 26 divided by 10. That will be equal to 2.69. 358 divided by 100 is dash. That's simply 3.58. That's the answer. Question 27. Measure the size of the angle. So actually, if you put a protractor with the baseline over here and measure the angle over here, it will be 62 degrees. And that is what we get as our answer. 62 degrees. Let's go to question 28. Question 28. Find the area of this shape. Show you're working. So since this 20 and this 12 centimeters, this will be 8 centimeters over here. That's all we need actually because now we can split this shape into two. Part A, part B. So part A area will be 12 into 7, which is equal to 84 centimeters squared. And part B's area is 8 into 4, which is equal to 32 centimeters squared. And how do we get that? Because the area of a rectangle is equal to length into breadth. So over here, 12 is the length, 7 is the breadth. And over here, 8 is the length, 4 is the breadth. So now the total area will be A plus B, which is equal to 84 plus 32, which is equal to 116 centimeters squared. That's the answer. And with that, I come to the end of the paper. Please like this video, subscribe to our channel, share this video with your friends and family, and comment on how you think this video was and how we could improve our channel. With that, it's me, Sanjay Vasu, signing out. Thank you. Bye.